Chapter 23. It's a quiet ride to Stephen's grandma's house. I told the truth. I did everything I was supposed to do, and it wasn't fucking good enough. Khalil's death wasn't horrible enough to be considered a crime. But damn, what about his life? He was once a walking, talking human being. He had family. He had friends. He had dreams. None of it fucking mattered. He was just a thug who deserved to die. Car horns honk around us. Drivers shout the decision to, re to the rest of the neighborhood. Some kids around my age stand on the top of a car as they shout, Justice for Khalil! Seven maneuvers around it all and parks in his grandma's driveway. He's silent and unmoving at first. Suddenly he punches a steering wheel. Fuck! Devante shakes his head. This is some bullshit. Fuck! Stephen croaks. He covers his eyes and rocks back and forth. Fuck! 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 I want to cry too. Just can't. I don't understand, Chris says. He killed Khalil. He should go to prison. They never do, Kenya mutters. Seven wipes his face. Fuck this, star. Whatever you want to do, I'm down. You want to burn some shit up? We'll burn some shit up. Give the word. Dude, are you crazy, Chris says. Seven turns around. You don't get it, so shut up. Star, what do you want to do? Anything. Everything. Scream. Cry. Puke. Hit somebody. Burn something. Throw something. They give me the hate, and now I'm going to fuck everybody, even if I'm not sure how. I want to do something I say. Protest, riot, I don't care. Riot, Chris echoes. Hell yeah, Devante gives me a dap. That's what I'm talking about. Star, think about this, Chris says. That won't solve anything. And neither did talking, I snap. I did everything right, and it didn't make a fucking difference. I've gotten death threats. Cops harass my family. Somebody shot into my house. All kinds of shit. And for what? Just as Khalil won't get, they don't give a fuck about us, so fine. I no longer give a fuck. But, Chris, I don't need you to agree, I say, my throat tight. I just need you to understand how I feel. Please? He closes and opens his mouth a couple times. No response. Seven gets out and holds his seat forward. Come on, Lyric. Kenya, you stay in here or are you coming with us? Staying, Kenya says, her eyes wet from earlier, in case Mama shows up. Seven nods heavily. Good idea. She'll need somebody. Lyric climbs off Kenya's lap and runs up the walkway. Kenya hesitates. She looks back at me. I'm sorry, Star, she says. This ain't right. She follows Lyric to the front door, and their grandma lets them inside. Seven returns to the driver's seat. Chris, you want me to take you home? I'm staying, Chris nods as if he's settling with himself. Yeah, I'm staying. You sure you're up for this, Devontae asks? You're gonna get wild out here. I'm sure, he eyes me. I want everyone to know that decision is bullshit. He puts his hand on the seat with his palm facing up. I put my hand on his. Seven cranks up the car and backs out the driveway. Somebody check Twitter. Find out where everything's going down. I got you, Devontae holds up his phone. Folks headed to Magnolia. That's where a lot of ship shit happened last. He winces and grabs his side. Are you up for this, Vontae? Chris asks. Devante straightens up. Yeah, I got beat worse than this when I got initiated. How'd they get you anyway, I ask. Yeah, Uncle Carlos said he walked off, says Seven. That's a long-ass walk. Man, Devante grows in that Devante way. I wanted to visit Dalvin, all right? I took the bus to the cemetery. I hate that he's by himself in the garden. I didn't want him to be lonely, if that makes sense. I try not to think about Khalil being alone in Garden Heights now that Mrs. Rosalie and Cameron are going to New York with Miss Tammy. And I'm leaving too. It makes sense. Devante presses the towel against his nose and lip. The bleeding slacked up. Before I could catch the bus back, King's boy snatched me up. I thought I'd be dead by now for real. Well, I'm glad you're not, Chris says. It gives me more time to beat you in Madden. Devante smirks. You crazy ass white boy if you think that's gonna happen. Cars are up and down Magnolia like it's Saturday morning and dope boys are showing off. Music blasts, horns blare, people hang out car windows, stand in the hoods. The sidewalks are packed. It's hazy out and flames lick the sky in the distance. I tell Seven to park at Justice for Justice. The windows are boarded up and black owned is spray painted across them. Miss Ofer said they would be leading protests around the city if the grand jury didn't indict. We head down the sidewalk just walking with no particular place to go. It's more crowded than I realized. About half the neighborhood is out here. I throw my hoodie over my hair and keep my head down. No matter what the grand jury decided, I'm still star, 
who was with Khalil, and I don't want to be seen tonight. Just heard. A couple of folks glance at Chris with that, what the hell is that white boy doing here look? He, he stuffs his hands in his pockets. Guess I'm noticeable, huh? He says. You sure you want to be out here, I ask? This is kind of how it is for you at N7 at Williamson, right? A lot like that, Seven says. And then I can deal. The crowds are too thick. We climb on top of a bus stop bench to get a better view of everything going on. King Lords and gray bandanas and garden disciples and green bandanas stand on a police car in the middle of the street chanting, Justice for Khalil! People gathered around the car and record the scene with their phones and throw rocks at the windows. Fuck that cop, bruh, a guy says, gripping a baseball bat. Killed him over nothing. He slams the bat into the driver's side window, shattering the glass. It's on. The King Lords and GD stomp out the front window. Then somebody yells, flip that motherfucker. The gangbangers jump off. People line up on one side of the car. I stare at the lights on the top, remembering the ones that flashed behind me and Khalil, and watch them disappear as they flip the car onto its back. Someone shouts, watch out! A Molotov cocktail sails towards the car, then woof, it bursts into flames. The crowd cheers. People say misery loves company, but I think it's like that with anger too. I'm not the only one pissed. Everyone around me is. They didn't have to be sitting in the passenger seat when it happened. My anger is theirs, and theirs is mine. A car stereo loudly plays a record-scratching sound. Then Ice Cube says, Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. A young N-word got it bad because I'm brown. You'd think it was a concert the way people react, rapping along and jumping to the beat. Devante and Seven yell out the lyrics. Chris nods along and mumbles the words. He goes silent every time Ice Cube says the N-word, as he should. When that hook hits, a collective fuck the police thunders off Magnolia Avenue, probably loud enough to reach the heavens. I yell it out too. Part of me is like, what about Uncle Carlos, the cop? But this isn't about him or his co-workers who do their jobs right. This is about 115. Those detectives with their bullshit questions and those cops who made daddy lie on the ground. Fuck them. Glass shatters. I stop rapping. A block away, people throw rocks and garbage cans at the windows of the McDonald's and the drugstore next to it. One time, I had a really bad asthma attack that put me in the emergency room. My parents and I didn't leave the hospital until like three in the morning, and we were starving by then. Mom and I grabbed hamburgers at the McDonald's and ate while Daddy got my prescriptions from the pharmacy. The glass doors at the drugstore shatter completely. People rush in and eventually come out with arms full of stuff. Stop, I yell, and the others say the same, but looters continue to run in. A glow of orange bursts inside, and all those people rush out. Holy shit, Chris says. In no time, the building is in flames. Hell yeah, says Devante. Burn that bitch down. I remember the look on Daddy's face the day Mr. Wyatt handed him the keys to the grocery store. Mr. Rubin and all those pictures on his walls, showing years and years of a legacy he's built. Ms. Savette walking into our shop every morning, yawning. Even pain in the ass Mr. Lewis with his top-of-the-line haircuts. Glass shatters at the pawn shop on the next block, then the beauty supply store next to it. Flames pour out of both and people cheer. A new battle cry starts up. The roof! The roof! The roof is on fire. We don't need no water. Let that motherfucker burn. I'm just as pissed as anybody, but this, this isn't it. Not for me. Devante's right th there with them, yelling the new chant. I backhand his arm. What, he says. Chris nudges my sides. Side. Guys, a few blocks away, a line of cops and riot gear marches down the street, followed closely by two tanks with bright lights. This is not a peaceful assembly, an officer on a loudspeaker says. Disperse now, or you will be subject to arrest. The original battle cry starts up again. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. People hurl rocks and glass bottles at the cops. Yo, Seven says. Stop throwing objects at law enforcement, the officer says. Exit the streets immediately or you will be subject to arrest. The rocks and the bottles continue to fly. Seven hops off the bench. Come on, he says, as Chris and I climb off too. We need to get out of here. Fuck the police. Fuck the police, Devante continues to shout. Monte, man, come on, says Seven. I ain't scared of them. Fuck the police. There's a loud pop. An object sails into the air and lands in the middle of the street and explodes in a ball of fire. Oh, 
Oh, shit, Devontae says. He hops off the bench and we run. It's damn near a stampede on the sidewalk. Cars speed away in the street. It sounds like the 4th of July behind us. Pop after pop after pop. Smoke fills the air. More glass shatters. The pop get closer and the smoke thickens. Flames eat away at the cash advance place. Just us for justice is fine, though. So is the car wash on the other side of it. Black owned, spray painted on one of its walls. We hop into Seven's Mustang. He speeds out of the back entrance of the old Taco Bell parking lot, hitting the next street over. The hell just happened, he says. Chris slumps in his seat. I don't know. I don't want it to happen again, though. And we're trying to take shit, Devante says, between heavy breaths. Like Star said, they don't give a fuck about us. We don't give a fuck. Burn this bitch down. But they don't live here, Seven says. They don't give a damn what happens to this neighborhood. What are we supposed to do then, Devante snaps. All that kumbaya peaceful shit clearly don't work. They don't listen till we tear something up. Those businesses, though, I say. What about them, Devante asks. My mama used to work at that McDonald's and they barely paid her. That pawn shop rifted ripped off us off a hell of a lot of times. Nah, I don't give a fuck about either of them bitches. I get it. Daddy almost lost his wedding ring to that pawn shop once. He actually threatened to burn it down. Kind of ironic it's burning now. But if the looters decide to ignore the black owned tags, they could end up hitting our store. We need to go help daddy. What, Seven says? We need to go help daddy protect the store in case looters show up. Seven wipes his face. Shit, you're probably right. Ain't nobody gonna touch Big Mav says De Devante. You don't know that, I say. People are pissed, Devante. They're not thinking shit out. They're doing shit. Devante eventually nods. All right, fine. Let's go help Big Mav. I think he's, he'll be okay with me. Help. think he'll be okay with me helping out, Chris asks. He didn't seem to like me last time. Seem to, Devante repeats. He straight up mean mugged your ass. I was there. I remember. Seven snickers. I smacked Devante and tell him, shush. What? It's true. He was mad as hell that Chris is white, but hey, you split that NWA shit like you did back there. Maybe he'll think you all right. What? Surprised a white boy knows the NWA, Chris teases? Man, you ain't white. You light-skinned. Agreed, I say. Wait, wait, Seven says over laughter. We got to test him to see if he's, if he really is black. Chris, you eat green bean, you eat green bean casserole? Hell no, that shit's disgusting. The rest of us lose, lose it saying, he's black. He's black. Wait, one more, I say. Macaroni and cheese, full meal, or a side dish? Uh, Chris's eyes dart around at us. Devante mimics the Jeopardy music. How to earn a black card for 300, Alex, Seven says in an announcer's voice. Chris finally answers. Full meal. Ah, the rest of us groan. Womp, 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 Devante adds. Guys, it is. Think about it. You get protein, calcium, Protein is meat, Devante says. No damn cheese. I wish somebody would give me some macaroni call calling it a meal. It's like the easiest, quickest meal ever, Chris says. One box in your... And that's the problem, I say. Real macaroni and cheese doesn't come from a box, babe. It, it eventually comes from an oven with a crust bubbling on top. Amen, Seven holds his fist to me. I bump it. Oh, Chris says, you mean the kind with breadcrumbs? What, Devante yells, and Seven goes, breadcrumbs? No, I say, I mean like there's a crust of cheese on top. We gotta to get you to a soul food restaurant, babe. This fool said breadcrumbs, Devante sounds seriously offended. Breadcrumbs. The car stops. Up ahead, a road closed sign blocks the street with a cop car in front of it. Damn, Seven says, backing up and turning around. Gotta find another way to the store. They probably got a lot of roadblocks around the neighborhood tonight, I tell him fucking breadcrumbs. Devante still can't get over it. I swear, I don't understand white people. Breadcrumbs on macaroni, kissing on the dog's mouth. Treating dogs like they're kids, I add. Yeah, says Devante, purposely doing shit that could kill them, like bungee jumping. Calling Target Target, like it makes it fancier, says Seven. Fuck, Chris mutters. That's what my mom calls it. Seven and I bust out laughing. Saying dumb shit to their parents, Devante continues, splitting up in situations when they clearly need to stick together. Chris goes, huh? Babe, come on, I say. White people always want to split up when they do when they do something bad happen. Ah, sorry. White people always want to split up, and when they do, something bad happens. That's only in horror movies, though, he says. Nah, shit was like the shit like 
That is always in the news, says Devante. They go on a hiking trip, split up, and a bear kills somebody. Car breaks down. They split up to find help, and a serial murder killer murders somebody, Seven adds. Like, have you all heard there's power in numbers, Devante asks? For real, though. Okay, fine, Chris says. Since you guys want to go there with white people, can I ask a question about black people? Cue the record scratching. No lie. All three of us turn and look at him, including Seven. The car fares off to the side of the road, scraping against the curb. Seven cusses and gets back on the, gets it back on the street. I mean, it's only fair, Chris mumbles. Guys, he's right, I said. You should be able to ask. Fine, says Seven. Go ahead, Chris. Okay, why do some people, some black people give their kids odd names? I mean, look at your, you guys' names. They're not normal. My name normal, Devante says, all puffed up sound, sounding. I don't know what you're talking about. Man, you're named after a dude from Jodesi, Seven says. And you're named after a number. What's your middle name, Eight? Anyway, Chris, Seven says, Devante's got a point. What makes his name or our names any less normal than yours? Who or what defines normal to you? If my pops were here, he'd say he'd fallen in the trap of white, the white standard. Color creeps into Chris's neck and face. I didn't mean, okay, maybe normal isn't the right word. Nope, I say. I guess uncommon is the word instead. He asks, you guys have uncommon names? I know about three other Devantes in the neighborhood, though, says Devante. Right, it's about perspective, says Seven. Plus, most of the names white people think of are usually, are unusual, actually have meanings in various African languages. And let's be real, some white people give their kids uncommon names, too, I say. That's not limited to black people. Just because it doesn't have a D or a law on the front doesn't make it okay. Chris nods. True enough. Why do you have to use D as an example, though, Devante asks. We stop again. Another roadblock. Shit, Seven hisses. I gotta go the long way through the east side. East side, Devante says. That's GD territory. And that's where most of the riots happened last time, I remind them. Chris shakes his head. Nope, can't go there then. Nobody's thinking about gangbanging tonight, Seven says. As long as I stay away from the major streets, we'll be all right. Gunshots go off close by, a little too close by, and all of us jump. Chris actually yelps. Seven swallows. Yeah, we'll be all right. 